everyone. Hope you're having a great day as always, people. Um, my name is Warren Howe. Hope you're having a great time. And, uh, you know, today we're going to be talking about big tech, right? Big tech, make sense of their earnings. Um, overall, make sense of the consumer sentiment, you know. Uh, everyone is looking at big tech earnings. Some, you know, there's a huge sell-off. Market is saying that they want to look at big tech, but the market just wants to sell. Right, the market just wants to sell. There's panic as usual. Uh, you know, call it profit taking, call it inflation fears, call it interest rates hike. You know, whatever it is, the market just wants to sell off. Right, so we just want to make sense of the numbers because we can actually try to navigate. Uh, how is the consumer sentiment? Right, how is consumer spending? Um, hopefully, we can you know we can get to it. But before that, you guys know the drill smash that like button, right? Smash that heart button. Uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't. You know, like this video if you haven't. It'll be available on YouTube. Um, again, we go live every week and just be making sense of some topics. Uh, you know, build mindset, mental models, anything that you guys want. Leave it in the comments and, uh, you know, I'll do a, a content based on that. No problem, right? So let's move on. Now, I have here, I have opened up four... Investor Relations uh, 10Q of Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Most of which, I mean, uh, I'm only invested in Google, which is one of my 10, and we talked about this before in a previous video. Uh, this is one of the stock that I want to DCA on, dollar cost average on a 10-year basis, regardless of the price. Why? Because it's a no-brainer. Now, I don't really, I find the clean, you know, I find clean business models, Right. Part of the DCA is I, climb, I find clean business models and I want more, you know, strong earnings. I want a cushion, right? This is all, we must strive to have that, in my opinion, because, you know, we need stability, especially in these times now, regardless of any situation, they have a good product market fit and whatnot, right? We've said that before many, many times. So Google is one of them. And uh, let's quickly look. Hopefully, we have time to cover everything. We don't have time to cover the transcript. Maybe we do a little bit, but uh, let's look through four earnings. You know, call it a lazy analysis in a way, right? Just a quick one. So I'm going to go to jump into MDNA, and because that's where they explain why did you know did it go up? Why did it go down? What's the reason? So this is Google, and we're going to start with Google first. And I've let's see. So consolidated revenues. So here's the thing. Google is a monster of a company. Let's put it that way, right? Monster of a company. 2021 was supposed to be good because of 2020's results, right? Uh, stay at home. Everyone is Googling more. But then again, this trend does not stop, right? That's why I'm actually investing in Google. So the, the reason why I'm saying I invest in clean just now is because when I compare with uh, Amazon, Microsoft, not really. Apple is, you know, not really as well in terms of clean, clean balance sheet. I know they're cash heavy. They also have that. Uh, they have made investments which are, in my opinion, not really a strategic investment. So, you know, that's just my opinion. But I look for clean. And Google is the cleanest, right? The best balance sheet. The, a, a, a TAM that is growing like crazy. And we have, okay, so revenues increased 23%, Right. Uh, monster of a company growing 23% quarter over quarter, which is insane. Cost of revenues also increasing. OPEC's increasing as well. So see, that's the key issue that we are facing here, right? Cost of revenues actually increasing 23%, which is similar to the uh, uh, revenues. That's why there's an 8% loss on the net income. And most of that is obviously, you know, going to interest and taxes. But well, maybe not really interest, but Cost of revenues are actually increasing. Why? Right? That's what we're here to find out. And is that worrying? Yes, for the quarter. Uh, and especially where they said that Russia v Ukraine actually just had a small impact. So let's let's continue on, right? So operating income increased 22% as well. And that's why there's a net income loss. Now that is well, it's not a, a you know, it's not a great earnings, obviously, but I think it's not too bad. Right, it's not too bad because revenue increased nonetheless. Twenty three percent is a lot. So, increase primarily driven by an increase in Google services segment of revenues of ten B, increase in Google Cloud segment of revenues of one point eight B, which is forty four percent. Now, this is insane. 
So cost of revenues was 29, increase driven by other costs of revenues and TAC. I believe this is traffic acquisition costs. Um, operating expenses increased because of increasing headcount and increase in advertising and promotional expenses. Now, Google, I mean, in these times now, you know, unemployment rates are down and economy is healthy, employment's, employment is strong. The only way that I would be worried about, and this trend would further, see, I, we, I mentioned this before, when cost of revenues are going up, especially what, you know, especially those that are hit by commodity prices, raw materials, they have no choice to maintain margins by letting stuff go. But then again, if the revenues and demand is strong, they can't do anything. They have to keep the stuff. My point here is Google is still hiring. They're still growing. Their, their stock price is definitely going to be down, going to, get, going to get beat down, but their fundamentals are in the end going to get better, right? If a recession hits, will Google, you know, will, they, will ad spending be lesser? For sure, right? We'll take a, they'll take a hit in their revenues. They'll take a hit in their, you know, margins for sure. But as long as they're actually keeping employees, you know, happy, clients happy, yeah, you know, whoever that's actually advertising on their platform happy because, you know, then again, everyone uses Google, right? <clears throat> um, and later, we're going to see the breakdown of YouTube revenues. As long as that's increasing, I wouldn't have any problem, right? So people talk about, okay, let's buy and hold, right? Let's buy on a, a stable company. It's Google. We need to see the breakdown in order to to make sense whether or not, you know, it's uh, going to be good throughout the year. And when I see this, they're actually hiring more. That's a good sign, right? That's a good sign. So during the first quarter, we suspended the vast majority of our commercial activities in Russia. Uh, this do not have a material effect on our financial results. So that's good news, right? So that's good news. So why did they actually have to increase in this spending if it's not really, you know, Russia, right? Um, simply because they have to, you know, expand their team. Seasonality-wise, Q1 is not the best, right? Their, their quarters will definitely be kicking in, in the later part of the year. So it's good news that Russia, you know, does not have a material effect. So we entered an agreement to acquire Mandian all in cash. That's cool. Uh, repurchase of Class A shares. So they're actually having a share buyback of 70 billion, right? In the end, giving shareholder value. The company announced in February that the board of directors had declared a 20 for one stock split. Now, just based on market sentiment, after this split, we will expect to see more liquidity. No, more liquidity means more buying just for the short term. I don't really care about that because I'm invested for the long term, but this is something to take note of. Operating cash flow was 25B, primarily driven by revenues generated from our advertising products. Capex of 9.8 reflects the increase in purchase of office facilities. So expanding office, expanding people more. Now let's look at a breakdown. Google search and other. Now, again, Google search increased um, by quite a significant amount. Let me draw my calculator here. I'll bring up my calculator. So Google search itself grew 24%. Okay, so that grew to 24%. YouTube grew 14%. So not as great. Google network grew a substantial amount. That's crazy. Maybe 20%. And overall, Google advertising grew 23%. Which is still good, right? Which is still very, very good. Um, considering this, you know, monster of a company. Google services, Google cloud grew a lot. Uh, hedging gains, losses. Okay, so total revenues grew 24%. So, increase. I want to find out why YouTube, though. Um, overall growth, uh in Factors including increasing in searching queries resulting from growth in user adoption. That's cool. YouTube ads uh, increase to the tree growth driven by brand and direct response advertising products. Growth for our brand advertising products was primarily driven by increased spending by our advertisers. Growth for, see, see, that is the key. That's the key. When we want to talk about corporate profits, consumer sentiment, and what is the nature of spending. Now, again, this is Q1. So this reflects... Um, uh, this now is May, right? So it's three months. It reflects from the beginning of the year. <clears throat> the stock market tanked the beginning of the year because, you know, stock market is always factoring things early that, you know, there'll be slow demand, high inflation. But the key thing here is are businesses still spending on advertising, right? Of course, it depends on 
the type of business. But as long as they're actually increased in spending, and Google has pricing power. I mean, they don't really care. Their ads, they don't, they'll just price it as it is, right? Especially, you know, following to a good, good economy, strong economy, uh, they will price it as it is. They have pricing power for sure. So when I want to see this, what I see is, okay, companies are still willing to, you know, put on spend. There's, there's heavy traffic. Uh, as long as there's heavy traffic, people, they'll still drive more sales. And that's where the demand kicks in. And that will sort of navigate somewhat how uh, demand will be throughout the year. Now, I know it's just Q1. And bear in mind, based on seasonality, Q1 is not as great, right? It'll be better towards the end of the year when all the holidays kick in and whatnot. Um, but, you know, Google is Google. So growth for our direct response advertising products was primarily driven by increased advertising spending as well as improvements to ad formats and delivery, Okay. Uh, primarily driven by strength in AdSense and AdMob. So revenues are no problem. Revenues are no problem. Impressions change, cost per impression change, 17%, paid clicks change, uh, increased. Paid clicks increased, okay, 17, 16%. Impressions increased 5%. Uh, Google increased. So United States, we have a 47% uh, by geography, which is the majority. Uh, that's cool. Use of constant currency revenues. Okay, I'm going to skip through that. MU revenues, TAC. Now, cost of expenses. So, TAC, uh, this is traffic acquisition costs. That increased because of that increase in revenue. Uh, you know, I wish that it, I wish that their net margins did better, but anyway, they're still growing, right? See, big of a company still growing. Other costs of revenues increased. Okay. R&D, Increased um, percentage of revenue, 8%. No, R&D is 13%. Sales marketing is 8%. So that's good news. It's below 10. GNA was well, always below 10. I mean, as long as they keep it that way. GNA is just 5%. So R&D is the majority cost because, you know, why not, right? It's They have to maintain that platform itself. Um, segment profitability. So Google services. Right. So other best Google Cloud. Okay, right. So revenues on Google Cloud increase, but operating income actually is they're on a loss segment wise, right? Google services obviously is a monster. So it's actually dragged down by other bets and Google Cloud, right? Corporate costs. So it's actually dragged down from those. And we're going to make sense of the numbers. Um, Google services, operating income increased 3.4 uh, due to growth in revenues, partially offset by increases in TAC. Compensation, Google Cloud, decreased 43 mil, probably driven by growth and revenues, partially offset, okay? And other bets, uh, same, compensation, okay. So we're gonna go through, I'm not gonna go through the balance sheet. It's definitely gonna be strong as usual. They bought, a, they literally bought a company all right, all out in cash, all cash acquisition. So I'm not gonna go through that. I'm gonna go through the numbers straight away and I'm just gonna make sense of that. So income statement. Revenues increased, yes. Cost of revenues increased as well, as we saw. Sales marketing, very, very small portion, very small portion of the revenues that we saw just now. Bringing total cost at 47, so that decreased, right? Net income decreased, actually. Um, income from operations increased. Other income, right? So, right, so a majority of the... Okay, because it was other income. Other income. How could we not track that just now so we got other income will fluctuate um recorded in other income okay so reflect these gains loss of component other income so we have somewhat deposits that actually took a haircut of 1b uh net gains gains reflected on other gain net gains other securities, okay. Non-marketable securities, which are carrying, okay. Including component other income. Okay, derivative financial. Okay, cash flow hedges. Now I'm gonna go back here. So let's make sense of this. Other income, which is not a core component and we can just, you know, get that away from the next quarter. That actually took a haircut of 
easily because income from operations actually increased. So, uh, well, that's why. So, because in 2021, uh, the other income was actually, it was income of 4.8B, either from, you know, sale of a, uh, a particular company or other income, which we, which we can track down in Q, Q1 2021. That's why there's a loss um, uh, comparing 8%, right, from 2021. So actually, although the cost increase, the core profits of uh, Q1 is actually good. It's actually solid. It's actually more than Q1. So that's what I missed out earlier. It's actually due to other income. Now, taking away other income, and I just want to take the core profits, I'm using income from operations. So total cost expenses, 16,437. Uh, it's actually 16,437. And let me take this percentage here. So 21283. No, it's 3353 three, divided by 21283. Three. So we have actually 15%. Uh, it, provision for income taxes con constituted 15%. Uh, uh, what I did was 3353 three, three, divided by the income from uh, income from before income taxes, which is 21283, that's 15%. But if I take 3353 three, three, divided by actually the income from operations, then it would be 20%. So let's take 20% as the uh, potential income taxes, right? So we've got 209, two, uh, 20B times 20%. They actually netted a 16B in um, in net income, right? Net income after taxes, provision of taxes. So if, I, if we were to take away the net income, take away the other income from Q1 2021, it's actually substantially more. Now, what is the figure? Let's let's try to work it out. So 17930 minus 4846, they actually had net income of around 13, 14B. Right, compared to 2022 um, of seventeen B. Yep. So that increase is actually four B, which is four B increase from thirteen to fourteen. Is is twenty eight percent net income growth. See, that's why we have to make sense of the other income here. Right. This doesn't constitute. This does not constitute a uh, uh, core operation, which, which they did not. Let's see. Let's make sense of the MDA again. I know. I'm taking too much time on Google. I'm supposed to go on in others, but I'm taking too much time on Google, which I don't mind. This is one of a monster company that I'm invested in anyway. Are you guys invested in Google? Let me know in the comments. Uh, you guys know the drill. If you're watching this live right now, let me know you're here. Click hashtag live. You're watching this on replay, click has that replay down there, especially in the YouTube comments, so that I know who's there. Uh, it'd be great to interact with you guys. They did not really okay, other income. So I missed this one out just now. Um, I missed this one out, other income, but they did not actually explain other income, other information, or did I miss it out? So they bought a company outright, other income expense net. 124%. They have uh, OPEX is still increasing tandem with revenues, which is fine. There we go. So other income, other income that decreased 6B uh, due to gains and loss on equity securities and changes in accrued performance fees. Okay, so that's where the equity securities, right? That's their investments on equity. That's reflected in the net income statement. So we can't really take that into core profits. And uh, technically, just on the business itself, they're already profitable net income-wise. They grew 24% year over year, right? So let's put it that way. And that's that's a win for me. That's a great story for me, right? So sorry I missed this out. Uh, net re unrealized losses were recognized on marketable equity securities, partially offset by 460 on net unrealized gains okay so it's basically on equity equitable securities that they invested in that it did not do well <clears throat> um which is fine because the core profits are still there so 
to me, this is actually an A rating sort of uh, Q1. When we want to navigate what's the consumer spend, how to, you know, is uh, people still, you know, increasing their ad spend and, and basically they want to get more marketing so they have to increase spending, right? And Google, they are, it's all, you know, it's all ad spend. It's all ad revenues. Um, they are, we can navigate somewhat that it's still strong, right? Company profits are still there. Consumer sentiment is still there. People are still surfing on, you know, YouTube is slow. I expected YouTube to do better, but Google, you know, being what it is, Google search engine is actually increasing, which is really good news. And um, that to me is a win. Now, just quick one on the balance sheet, 20B in cash, 113B in uh, marketable securities, which is insane. Monster company having 133B in cash. Accounts receivables, you know, it's a quite a big amount, but still decent. 177 total current assets, which is crazy. PPE is at, wow, PPE is very high. <laughs> PPE is 104. It's Google, right? Um, current liabilities, okay. Practically nothing for them. Accrued expenses, 33B. We got long-term debt at 14B. Practically nothing for them. So bringing the total... Uh, which is, you see, that's the good thing, right? We got total liabilities having like 60% of uh, total liabilities is actually current liabilities, which is the best operating lease liabilities. So this is nothing. This is just like a sneeze for them. <clears throat> Monster of a balance sheet. Cash flows are king. So, okay, great. So we covered Google. Let's act on that. And let's cover Apple for a little bit. We don't have time to cover all. I'm so sorry. I took too much time on Google, but then again, this is what we do. Uh, so quarter highlights. I wish everything you know was like that, right? So total net sales increased nine percent, seven point seven B. When when sales of Apple increased nine percent, it tells us something. <laughs> it tells us that people still have money. It's either that or you know, again, they are selling. They're selling. They're selling a commodity, right? They're selling a commodity. I mean, they're selling sort of. Uh, uh, well, social status, right? I need to have that phone first. And that's what, that's Apple all the way. And they can still continue to have that. Growing 9%, you know, says is good, right? It's good. So 7.7B during the second quarter, driven by primary growth in services, iPhone and Mac. So during the second quarter, the company released the following products, iPhone SE, 5G technology. Okay, that's cool. Company repurchased 22 billion of its common stock yet again. So these these guys, they have nowhere to put their cash. Might as well just reinvest in the company. And that's good news if you can pull it off, which they can and have been doing. So net sales by category, iPhone. Um, iPhone is increasing 5%. Six months. Okay, six months increased in 8%. So I'm looking at the three months because we're looking at quarter. The Mac increased by 15%. The pad decreased a little bit. Wearables increased 12%. So this is the monster. I, I want to see this. Like, <clears throat> this is where the margins kick in. Overall, margins are great because they have pricing power and they can charge how much and people will still buy. But this is where their profits really kick in in terms of margins. And when I see increase of 17%, which is the majority of revenue increase, that's insane. So services net sales include sales from the company's advertising, Apple Care, cloud, digital content, payment. That's cool. Services net sales also include. Okay, so that's good news. <clears throat> um, iPhone, Mac, compared to the same period, high net sales. Okay. They're still doing great. Like iPhone is still a monster of company and still doing great. That's because people love their products. Um, America, 19%. So we looked at Google, which was, America was 40%. 40 plus percent. Oh, but this is a change. Sorry, this is a change. Uh, okay, I was going to look at geography. <clears throat> um, and it's good to have US being the lesser amount, which is not, um, but my point is there's still a lot of room to grow if it's still small. But this, I'm pretty sure it's not, uh, yeah, that I'm pretty sure in US is definitely more, but we need to see, you know, we need to keep on digging in terms of geography. Uh, percentage but anyway gross margin products okay so we got products total gross margin of 42b which is increasing like 4b increasing more than 10 percent 12 percent 
um, products at 36%, services 72. See, there we go, right? This is where the margins kick in. If they increase services more, that will definitely increase their overall profitability in terms of margins. So total gross is at 43%. Okay. Uh, probably due to this, right? Great. Operating expenses, R&D, percentage on total net sales, SGNA, total OPEX. Um, so that percentage, so see, R&D is still small. OPEX is the most here, which is still considering small. I mean, it's above 10%, but it's, you know, it's good. R&D. Um, okay. So provision of net income taxes, legal proceedings. So I'm just going to jump into the, I'm just going to jump into the numbers here. And we're going to see financial statements. Okay, so products, <clears throat> quarter over quarter, compared to the year before, products increased by 5B divided by 72, well, a small amount. Services increased quite a substantial amount. So, so 3B divided by 16. 17%. That's a good increase. Uh, total net sales increased uh, overall by 97 minus 89. Increased by 9%. So not, you know, sexy, but okay. Cost of sales products increased as well. Services increased lesser than how much the revenues increased, which is a good sign. Gross margin, therefore, increased by... 10.5% overall. Sexy. Good. R&D uh, increased as well, but it's still a very controllable amount, bringing the operating income of 29B. So income before, other income is small, so I'm not going to factor that in, bringing the net income increase to 2B. Now that is less than 10%, but it's still good. Now imagine having monster of companies actually increasing double digits. If you have a double digit, especially on Google, 20 plus percent, that's going to be a better increase. Okay. That's going to be a crazy increase. Um, and that says a lot about owning that entire company. Now, Apple is not as sexy because their growth is not as, you know, it's quite limited in somewhat as, as they have to, you know, launch new products in terms of uh, probably a new monster tam that they that they have to capture, but Apple, all in all, if you want stability, it's there. Uh, consumer sentiment is driven is not really that affected because their you know product increase, product sales increase is actually still strong. But uh, okay, that that says something. So to be increase, uh, we have net income. So let's look at the balance sheet a little bit. So balance sheet actually decreased. Cash and cash equivalents. Okay, market for securities. Their cash is actually not as strong. It's around 50 B. Inventory is very low, which is good. Uh, marketable securities. Right, non-current assets. Okay, so that's 140. PPE is at 39. Current liabilities at 52. Different revenue. So their term debt, is actually rather there. So total current liabilities is more than total current assets. That is something to think about. And other current liabilities. So the current liability is actually quite high. Non-current norm is actually quite high. So the term, see, the term debt is 103 V. So why, why did they take so much debt, right? During a low, low interest rate environment, I'm pretty sure they took a ton of debt. Why? Because they can offset tax. You got cash. You don't have to use so much cash. You take debt you can actually, you know, sort of decrease your taxes because you're taking on debt. Um, that's overall. But that, again, is not... Uh, they can definitely pay off their debt, but their cash in relation to how much they have in debt um, versus what they have is not exactly sexy in a way that, you know, they can give uh, investor confidence in terms of, you know, uh, they, they can definitely survive, but in terms of a health, sexy balance sheet, if let's say sales get affected during recession and which will definitely get affected, right? Apple is so expensive. Uh, they will depend on their services and cheaper sort of uh, products, uh, uh, product pricing to, to actually survive. So, you know, not an A-star balance sheet for sure, but I already knew this because when I was doing their discount, I was doing the intrinsic valuation, discounted cash flow, 
I noticed that they have huge debt. That's because they took on a lot of debt since 2020, uh, even before that. And that's where, you know, they are taking advantage of the low interest rates. And we can actually just, you know, type in the liquidity that they have and look at the interest that actually paying off. Uh, you can see that it's, it's actually very small. So interest is, as, as long as interest rates are actually low, at that time that they secured. Now, I'm not sure if, if that's actually changing as interest rates go higher, but, you know, they're definitely going to see some headwinds in terms of paying off interest, right? Paying off interest. And, uh, but the good news, obviously, is that their products are increasing, not double digits, services double digits. So, you know, that's good. Um, yeah, that's Apple. I have Apple. I don't intend to actually pile on more on Apple at the moment. More on Google, actually. Uh, but, you know, then again, that's me. So significant products, this increase. See, let's work out total net sales. Like iPhone constitutes, let's go back to the income statement. So the total revenues for the quarter is actually 97B. iPhone constitutes more than 50%. Overall, not mistaken, iPhone is like 40 plus percent, which is good, but they need, in my opinion, and I've been saying this in 20, since 2020, 2019, they need to find a way to actually, you know, get away from that because concentration of revenue is actually quite high just on one iPhone. Now, iPhone is sexy and all, but I think they need a breakthrough product. And it could be the Apple car, which is a few years in, but, you know, in my opinion, where we look at S curve, we look at growth potential. If it's not double digits year over year, they need to do, they need to make a change on that. And, uh, you know, that's where they can actually grow their market cap and their value, their deserved value more by another breakthrough product. Right. But that's my opinion on Apple. If you, are you guys invested in Apple? Let me know. I'm not surprised if everyone here is invested in Apple, but uh, okay. So that's Apple. Let's go through Amazon, which I'm not entirely a fan of, to be frank, but uh, let's just go through anyway. Just a quick lazy analysis. Now, MDA, I'm looking at operating activities. Okay. Um, overview. So overview, macroeconomics, increase, increase inflation, prolonged. COVID, global supply chain, they were all affected by that. Growth rates, North America. So tracking, navigating Amazon is actually important. The reason is because we want to see how consumer spending is, right? We want to see how consumer spending is. We want to see whether or not people are, you know, uh, because it's a consumer discretionary sector, right? It's an industry. And people do not have to spend as much. That's the concept. People were spending a lot in COVID because they're at home, they still have money, but in an environment where people do not have enough money just to, you know, allocate on these discretionary items, they will take a hit, right? So if you guys are bullish on Amazon, there'll definitely be more room to, you know, pile on more. But if you guys are just DCAing over time, then, you know, go on tranches, no problem, right? But my, my point is we want to navigate how consumer sentiment is and the spending. And if this is not well, then... It tells us a lot because Amazon is Amazon, right? People use that to buy stuff. If people don't, if the trend is not going to be buying stuff anymore or lesser than 2021, then, you know, obviously their sales will go down. But let's see. Let's see. I, I, as I understand, their net income was driven by Rivian, which is in a way question, in my opinion, questions the uh, management's decision. But anyway, because why would you invest in Rivian, you know? But uh, anyway, that's just me. So factors described above contributed deceleration of net sales growth rate increases in our operating costs, uh, particularly across our North America and international segments due to increased wage rates. This is this is good thing to have, right? Increased transportation costs. That's for sure what's affecting, affecting the supply chain. Fulfillment network inefficiencies resulting from constrained labor. See, that's what I mean by clean. We have a company like Amazon that's so focused on so many things. You are, you know, you're Amazon, right? You are facing transportation costs, fulfillment costs, you, you know, supply chain disruptions. You are definitely affected by that. Um, wage increase, everyone gets affected. But my point is their business model is on the cloud. They have, you know, they have Amazon and Amazon being Amazon, like, you know, e-commerce 
uh, they have Rivian, they have so many aspects to concentrate on. And what I need is focus, you know, regardless of any time. You got a war breaking out. And of, obviously, if a war is in US, then obviously companies like Google will be affected. A lot of companies we invest in will be affected. But we got, you know, a war happening in Russia and Ukraine um, affecting tons of companies, but not exactly, you know, Google, not exactly Apple, depending on the sales of the, you know, geographic sales, right? But we need a clean sort of, company where they have good focus in my opinion and in times like these they will take a hit amazon is definitely going to take a hit more based on all the reasons that we said consumer discretionary income getting lesser should they you know should a recession hit because that's the first question we covered that in the previous video right the first question is will they take a hit will they survive in a recession later we're going to go through the balance sheet check it out but, you know, Amazon is definitely going to take a hit more. So I expect more volatility, in my opinion, in Q2, Q3 onwards. Now, seasonality might be better in Q3 and Q4 for these companies, especially Amazon, because of sales and whatnot. But is, if the companies that are dragging down Amazon since Q1 is still going to be affected, regardless of seasonality, for example, Rivian, then you will see more pain ahead, right? So net sales include product and service sales, uh, related shipping fees and digital media content. Okay. Uh, represent third party seller fees, fulfillment. Okay. AWS. The only sexy thing about Amazon is actually AWS, which is driving up total profit margins. All right. AWS is more than, you know, 30%. E commerce is not high. So, you know, single digits, right? So, all in all, profit margins that can actually be raised up. And I'm pretty sure their profit margins are like not for 12%. Right, we can actually see that, but uh, let's see. Net sales North America being the uh, country, uh, the majority international. So North America is actually close to 60%. AWS itself is actually, let's see. So we got 13.5 divided by 108.5, 12%. So they can do better than that, right? If, if let's say revenues increase, net sales increase by 20% of AWS, things will definitely be better in terms of margins. Um, but you know, I've been actually waiting to see that AWS segment ever since, you know, I never invested in, in Amazon until now I've been regretting it, but I have a chance now. I have a chance to buy in the dip provided that I see better consumer spending and sentiment actually getting better from what I see. And, um, and I'll just read on. I don't think for throughout the year, I don't think things will be better for Amazon in terms of their sales. Uh, but I could be wrong, right? So Amazon bulls don't hate me. This is just what I see. North America, 40%, international 60, okay. Oh, this is year over year percentage growth. Okay, so that's good. AWS is still increasing, you know. All right, I'm looking wrong. I'm looking at 2021. Uh, they increased, right? So let's see, 2022. So North America sales divided by 64, increased by 8% on the North America. International actually decreased by six. Um, AWS, however, increased by 36%. How crazy is that? 37, whatever, right? 37%. So that's crazy. AWS is, yeah, sort of uh, their beacon, their star to increase margins overall and, uh, you know, and still good. It's a no-brainer, right? All tech companies are actually using AWS infrastructure. And that's one of the best, you know, investments that Amazon did. So, okay. Sales increased by this much. Why? Change in foreign currency exchange rates. Uh, okay. Increase growth effects. Increase unit sales by third-party sellers and advertising sales. International sales, the same things. Increased subscription services, okay. AWS, because of increased customer usage, partially offset by pricing changes. Pricing changes are driven largely by continued efforts to reduce prices for customers. Now, reducing prices is great and all to attract more revenues, but this is something about pricing power, right? Okay, so operating income, AWS, so their loss on these segments. But see, again, AWS is contributing everything. It's everything. So 6.5 divided by 18, their profit margins are off the roof. 
that profit margin is at 35%, as I said, right? It's insane. Um, so operating expenses, operating expenses. So cost of sale 66, fulfillment. Um, okay, 20, technology and content, sales and marketing, total OPEX, your, your percentage growth. Okay, cost of sales. So I'm looking at OPEX. Now, cost of sales actually increased. Fulfillment increased. Everything increased because obviously revenue increased. The GNA is so sexy. I mean, GNA is just 2.5. Now, it's hard to sort of have a percentage of revenues for these type of companies because these type of companies have huge volume, right? But 2.5B for the quarter is just lean as hell. Sales marketing at 8. 10 is in content at 14. So that's a lot. Cost of sales. Total OPEX 112. Um, cost of sales. Okay. Cost of primary due to that. Shared infrastructure, fulfillment. Okay. Sales marketing. Everything increased. Right. So I want to, let's see OPEX a little bit. GNA. GNA, okay, primarily due to increase in payroll. So increase in payroll is everywhere. We can see that trend going throughout the year. That's where companies will also decrease margins, in my opinion, for the year because of these tax, uh, you know, wages. So they have to, in, you know, demand has to keep, keep up. Free cash flow, purchase of product, uh, PPE. I'm not going to go through that. So I'm good, just going to, let's see, let's operating expenses, change. Operating income is positive. They're having a loss. Guidance. Okay, so we provided guidance on April. Um, okay, good. Guidance. Net sales expected to be between 116B and 121. Second quarter to grow 3 to 7%. Operating income is expected to be between 1B and 3B. So they're giving this uh, sort of range which is not great because the total margin on that operating wise, even on the best case scenario, we are looking at 2%. So compared with 7.7B in the second quarter, the guidance assumes that prime day occurs in third quarter. Okay, so did they mention Rivian here? Because I know that's the case. Uh, equity investment risk, yeah. So represent 11.8 of our investment. Okay, take a huge loss from Rivian. And uh, let's see, let me go back to the income statement here. So, still operations, new product sales. There we go. 116 total net sales. Cost of sales, fulfillment. Okay. So, all driven by operating income because of the AWS, which brings the other, this is the loss. So, that's why other income actually contributes to... Uh, I'm going to go to other income here. Okay, three portion of cash. So, okay, market will warrant securities. Yeah, it's Rivian for sure. 8B. 8B is a lot. So, shake, okay, valuation loss from 7.6B on Rivian, our investment in Rivian's preferred stock. Valuation loss. Okay, for changes. Okay, resulted. Um, so it's not, it's not the core. So it's not really fair to be factoring Rivian, Rivian in terms of their core operations. It's not fair to do it. Um, but regardless of that, regardless of that, they are actually expecting more pain uh, in terms of the cost that will increase. So they already guided in terms of operating income and operating income is a better measure. We don't want to take in, you know, interest income and whatnot. So operating income itself, they navigated negative one to three in the next quarter, right? So obviously we have to see how they do, but that will significantly decrease from what they did in Q2, which is 7.7, .7, which we, what we read just now. So <clears throat> operating income on the annualized wise, it's just going to be 3B all the way. 3B times four is 12B. 12B margins are still very slim right, as usual for Amazon. And can we expect a better valuation moving forward in terms of, you know, we got deals in the market, we got 
you know, better profitability in the market? Should we invest in a company that is actually doing, you know, we should be piling on more as they do bad throughout the year because, you know, markets are in cycles, right? So in this cycle right now, Amazon is probably going to have, in my opinion, see more pain. Thus reflecting the stock price this year, in my opinion, there's still a lot of, of room to actually go down. But, you know, this is something to consider, right? I'm not taking Rivian into account because that's just not operating. But the, op the core operations is still not as, you know, um, is expected to go down. So navigating that, navigating consumer sentiment, you know, things might be far-fetched. Now, I think it's a better rep representation if we were to navigate Q3 and Q4 because that's where they will do well. So if they can give a guidance on Q3 and Q4, then we can really see how well Amazon will do. But anyway, that's the story of Amazon. Hopefully you guys have it. Let's quickly jump into Microsoft before I end this call. Um, so I'm looking at MDNA. Microsoft itself, like LinkedIn and their cloud is actually, you know, doing good as I know. Um, cloud revenues, LinkedIn. So that's the description. Okay, so revenue increase by quite a lot. Holy shit, that's eight, that's 20%. Yeah, so it's close to 20%. Gross margins are also increasing easily by 17%. Again, strong double digits. Operating income is strong. Uh, see, that's what I mean by, so not Microsoft is not exactly clean, clean, but end of the day, they're just selling off, you know, the best software in the world, in my opinion, right? Um, so if we can navigate how they do here and, and their reason for increase in OPEX or revenues, we can actually try to see uh, for the full year. And I think Microsoft is still going to be doing well over the year um, simply because of their business model, right? If employment is getting better, then LinkedIn will do well. Um, you know, their cloud services are actually growing well. Corporate's still using it. Uh, they have a good network effect in the ecosystem. So yeah, Microsoft, go Microsoft. I already sold my Microsoft actually since 2020, but, uh, you know, huge regret. But um, then again, there's only so many companies that I can hold, right? So net income actually increased by 1.13, 1, 1. 1. 1. sorry, 1.3B. And we take that it's an 8% increase in income. That's good. That's really good. Uh, okay, so let's read up why. Driven by intelligent cloud revenue increase, driven by Azure and other cloud services. Okay, more. Cost of revenues increase 5.1. Uh, gross margin increase 5.1B or 18% driven by growth across. Gross margin percentage. Okay, so driven by growth margin across. Cost of revenue increase because of Microsoft Cloud. Revenue increase 18%, uh, driven by Azure. Productivity. Okay, so basically their revenue increase because of Azure and the cloud, which is the cloud. Uh, Office 365 and LinkedIn. Awesome news. Personal company revenue increase driven by, okay, so 1.8B or 15% driven by uh, investments in cloud engineering, LinkedIn, commercial sales. LinkedIn is just a monster that's going to grow, in my opinion, right? Key changes, research and development expenses, sales and marketing, g &A, operating income prior, okay? Uh, revenue gross margin, right? So nine months, I'm gonna, not going to read nine months. Productivity and business, so that's the breakdown. Um, increase 17%. Cloud, 26%, crazy. Personal computing, 11%. I don't know who would buy Microsoft personal computing stuff. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, it's good to see that double digits, right? That, that's, in, that's a good increase compared to Apple. Well, obviously not all, but Apple is just single digits. So, so that's good news. So operating income, productivity, and business processes, 19% increase. Intelligent Cloud, 29%. So that's not as sexy because they increase, but their margins are still good. Uh, so that's three months. Now, revenue increased 22.2B or 17% due to LinkedIn revenues increase as well. Microsoft 365 increase. That's why 
operating income increased because of LinkedIn and others. Okay, the cloud, consumption base, uh, support. Okay, driven by improvement, improvement in Azure and other cloud. They're improving the infrastructure, I'm pretty sure, for Azure. And that's good. Revenue increased. Okay, OEM, revenue per license, which is a higher revenue per license. See, that's pricing power right there. Windows commercial products and cloud services. Uh, search news. Okay, so operating income increased. Nine months. Office commercial. Office grew. So revenue increased 16% compared to momentum. So that's nine months. I don't really want to see nine months in a way. R&D increased 21%. Sales marketing 10%. GNA 12%. Okay, interest and dividends. There we go. So let's quickly jump into the numbers. Uh, we've got income statements. So product services. Uh, and product itself increased three months by two point five two point five percent. Am I getting that right? Seventeen point three minus sixteen point eight divided by sixteen point eight. Oh, so it's increased by three point five percent. Not as great. Services increased by. 28%. That's good. So total revenue is all in all dragged up by services. We are looking at increase in 18%. Great. Uh, cost of revenue also increased. Gross margins increased by 17% as well. That's good. R&D, not as much. Sales marketing by 10%, GNA by less than 10%. Operating income, okay, so we got a net income of 16B. So for the quarter, they actually have a profitability of 16 point divided by 39.3 of 30, 33%, 33.8%. <laughs> Okay, provision, other income. Yeah, I'm not taking that in. Yeah, so it's the 33% business, profit margin business. Uh, that's three months, nine months, 25. Okay, very sexy business, expecting 25 to 30% for sure. Um, so that's good. I mean, people are still spending. All right, overall, making a summary, people are still spending. Um, they are still obviously uh, in ad spend as well, spending in terms of ad spend, in terms of their products, Apple and Microsoft, not really so much in, you know, discretionary items because they see sales. Well, sales is increasing for, for Amazon, but it's the cost, right? It's the expenses that is increasing as well. And that is not so sexy. So yeah. Um, so consumer sentiment overall is still strong. Um, in th in even, you know, navigating what Amazon is doing because revenue is increasing. Uh, but and we can see that the companies are still putting a lot more money into their infrastructure, right? Into investing in themselves, high payrolls, they're still hiring, which is great. So it's not really a bad factor, to be frank, fundamental wise. People are still freaking out, and that's just market sentiment, right? So that's what I'm getting from these four, big four. And there's nothing to panic. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> market, we can't really control market sentiment, but we can sort of see how things are. But as long as fundamentals are actually getting better and we don't see a slowdown soon, then things are going to be fine. I mean, core operations, they're still growing double digits. Well, some of them, Google, Microsoft, Apple is still a single digits, but, you know, driven by the cloud. Cloud is still doing sexy as hell. Um, it's the headwinds pressuring Amazon that we should be worried about if you're an Amazon long-term holder and obviously Rivian dragging it down. But we look at the core. Right, so we you know, hope you guys got some value out of that. Again, if you're watching this live right now, click hashtag live. Once you're on replay on YouTube, watch click hashtag replay. I forgot to record this session. Oh my god, but we will get the download from the live. And uh, hope you guys got some value. I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. bye, -bye.